My background is in the Roman and Iron Age archaeology of eastern Yorkshire. I was lucky enough to be brought up on a farm at home on Spalding Moor, where it turned out there were three pottery kilns. Excavation was done there by the East Riding Archaeological Society when he was a boy. I got captivated by finding Roman pottery. That led to a degree in archaeology uh, at Liverpool University. I did a PGC at York and returning to the region, getting a job at Bransome High School in Hull, I rejoined the East Riding Archaeological Society and was looking for projects to get involved in. And we had a very dynamic chair at the time, a man called Peter Armstrong. And Peter had begun looking at Bruff again after a long gap in which really there'd been little interest in the town. So in 1980, myself and a group of members of the Archaeology Society were called in to help out on one of Peter's excavations at what's now Petu Area Close. As Gordon Capes, who was the builder, was building a whole complex of very large detached houses. And in the course of doing that, we found quite substantial Roman remains of buildings and what was possibly part of either the fort or the fort annex. Finds included a military type oven, dated conveniently by mint condition or virtually mint condition coins of the emperors Nerva and Vespasian. So it gives us some clue. So again, little was done then by certainly my involvement until uh, as a senior lecturer in archaeology with a little bit of spare research money I decided that it was high time using uh, the expertise of, of James Lyle to do some geophysics. So we were able to get a section 42 license, undertook a magnetometer survey in the field and showed really quite spectacular results. Now the problem was those remains were very blurry. We've only just found out last year why. And that was because of the levelling of the field that took place in 1972 when cartloads of stone were brought in, or lorry loads rather, of stone were brought in from North Newbold quarries to protect the archaeology. Because what had happened in 1972 was Mr Freeman's ploughed field in which Philip Corder had excavated in the 1930s was being turned from agricultural land into a playing field. The cure to this uh, destruction was to lay a thick wad of limestone across the field. Towards the western side, little more than 20 centimetres to 30 centimetres deep, on the eastern side over a metre deep. And that is why the archaeology had been obscured. We coincided at a time where BAE Systems was being moved out and the then chair of the town council, Martin Credland, we joined forces and after various meetings we set up Petri Area Revisited. I've um, been interested in archaeology since the 80s, 90s and uh, I've uh, been on digs prior to this uh, with, uh, with um, Dr. Holkin and Professor Martin Millet and uh, Dr. Jeremy, I can't remember his second name now, uh, in the past. So I've, I've, I've got a, a good idea about how an archaeological dig works. So there's no worries in that. But it's, it's, um, it is interesting when you're listening to, to James and Peter talk uh, the, the knowledge base of those two gentlemen, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure listening to James pop along, look at it, evaluate it, check the memory banks, where have I seen this before, what, what, what happened last time, and, and making an on-the-spot decision before he goes wishing off to another place and make another decision. 
One of the first things we did was a major fundraising campaign and we were able to get sufficient money to get David Stavely up from Eastbourne, an uh, amateur geophysicist who happened to use ground penetrating radar. So he came up and uh, did the whole of the Burr's playing field. The results were astonishing. From the football pitch with all the markings on it, the penalty areas and everything, right down through stratigraphy, you could see layer upon layer upon layer of Roman activity. And really, that set off this whole excavation. The most intriguing feature, however, was a large D-shaped feature. And given that in the 1937 excavation, Philip Corder had found uh, the altar set up by Marcus Ulpius Januarius, which uh, gave a stage to the town, proscenium, presumably a theatre stage, we began to put two and two together and think, is this D-shaped feature the theatre? So that is why our trench is where it is. We wanted to position it over the D-shaped feature. Well, the, fir the first thing they're hoping to do is, is changing, changing perception of the place itself because for over a hundred years a Bruff has been um, known as an aircraft manufacturing facility and at the moment VE systems have got a very, very small footprint whereas we used to have a large part of the community actually working there. Uh, now is the time for us to change people's perception of aircraft manufacturers to Roman history and that's part of the driving force behind it. I'm a Romanist. I've worked on Roman Yorkshire for the last 40 odd years or thereabouts. Um, I've in the past done quite a lot of work on Roman towns, um, most recently on Malton Norton, but I've also published to a limited extent on Bruff as well, so I've got a direct interest in the site. Every site is unique, um, and the key to Bruff really is its location on the Humber, and, uh, and also the presence of a Walling Fen inlet, which would provide na a natural harbour, which I think makes it particularly interesting, um, and also the fact that Although the area has been substantially developed since the 1950s, there are key sites available um, uh, as here on, uh, on the Burrs. Now, our excavation has not confirmed the presence of the theatre. However, the excavated evidence does match very closely to the ground penetrating radar evidence in that what we've got in our trench is a large courtyard building. Now towards the end of our second season it's pretty clear that that courtyard building was remodelled on quite a number of occasions. The structure of the buildings, the kind of deposits that we found and once plotted it was pretty clear that what Corder had got is a different set of rooms in the same building that we're excavating now. The question is, what is this large courtyard building? We don't know. Um, this particular dig, the most, ex most interesting bit for me really is being the pit. That is what I've focused on a lot of, of the pit. Uh, what, what's going to happen to it as it evolves, as you get ever deeper, when will it stop? It's, it's an amazing, amazing array of layers of stuff in it. So uh, do you, have you come down on one side or the other as a structured deposition or not? It's good for that structured deposition, here we go. Was it deliberately put there in hey, that hey, particular hey, order? Hey, you, you can't hire archaeologists and not and not, not, not <laughs> to their opinions. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Was it's, it done deliberately? You know, I, it I, I, I believe, yeah. The, it, there's, there's been, there's been, uh, I was going to say actus reus, the mens rea, there's been the, 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 the it has been done deliberately like that there's been a reason for it what that reason is we'll ne probably never know but uh, what's at the bottom of it we probably will know and that's what i'm waiting for is what is at the bottom of it yeah. 
that there's increased recognition both in terms of uh, higher status Roman period uh, sites, towns, villas, uh, but also the rural archaeology, that there is regional distinctiveness and understanding what's going on on a local and regional level um, is what is actually going to give us the is a way to give us the best picture of what is happening across Roman Britain as a whole. Um, so uh, it's uh, equally part of it is the fact that there has been a considerable development of interest in uh, a vocational community or community archaeology with met lots of groups becoming actively interested in the history of their area and wanting to actually be engaged with research. We've reached out to everybody we can uh, in the community and we've had a, a heavy focus on well-being with the theme of it this year because there's so many people out there who have had been locked up, they've got anxiety problems and uh, it's uh, it, those people we wanted to get out, get down in, do something different. Uh, we've, we have thrown it out as well to the wider community so we've got people coming from as far as Hull and even further than that really. We've had so many first time con uh, contributors to it. Uh, they've, they've seen it in the past, I wouldn't mind doing that and this year they've had the opportunity to come down and actually do it. There's um, out of the 200 plus people who are taking part this year well over a hundred of them are first time archaeologists. It's actually recognising that there is a, everywhere a local version of Romano British archaeology. Um, you know, the, uh, it's, it's not simply the civilians in the south and the military in the north, that, we, that went out the window decades ago thankfully. But, but not, not in public discourse? No, no. I, agreed. No. Um, and unfortunately well, there's some very good archaeology in the media there's also some which is very lazy, I would suggest, and actually is just uh, repeating what they were taught in school, which actually was not very good in the first place. There are challenges with Bruff. Um, we, basically, anything we learn is, like anywhere else, is adding to our knowledge. But what the two seasons, well, the seasons here um, uh, have demonstrated is that there is a complex archaeology which actually in uh, the northern part of the site is, is potentially giving us new information about the early military aspects. We don't understand the Roman town or is it a town in the later period uh, questions, um, uh, but the preservation which has been demonstrated in this work gives, if you like, as great hope that we can actually answer those questions. And it's clear that there are Bruff has m a complex history just in this one trench. The number of uh, phases of buildings, number of demolitions, rebuildings, um, uh, th there, there is a story to be told. It would be nice to think that uh, it would be possible to get to the bottom of the trench and actually demonstrate sort of what the earliest occupation is in this area. That is not going to happen this year, obviously. Um, um, but what has come out this year has actually added to what we know about the site considerably. Some of the clues make it possible that there may be some kind of military connection. For example, we have a very good example of a crossbow brooch, which is typical of the kind of insignia that would have been worn by late Roman soldiers and in some cases members of, a, of the civilian imperial administration. We also found a rather fine buckle which was been identified by our fine specialist Dr Stephen Greep who is probably being military in association and this year we found what although it's got to be confirmed might be part of a belt plate with an which is embossed on one side kind of repousse type Everything's exciting about it. There's no one thing. It's the romance of what's been going on over 2,000 years in that particular spot. And I think everybody, everybody loves to touch something 
that's been held by a Roman. That is the romance of it all and that's what's exciting. What have you personally got out of this? Um, stressed. <laughs> anxiety but um, no it, it's you do get a lot of lot of pleasure seeing people enjoying themselves and to do things for the community it's it is it's brilliant it really is nice if people want to know more about the actual project itself I mean we've got our Facebook page uh, Petriari Revisited and we've also got a website uh, which uh, gets updated every every now and again when I've got the time to do it unfortunately um, but yeah Brough, Brough is a famous place we're working with the town council to try and change the signage so uh, when you come into it it says Brough home of Petuari or something like that um, it's, uh, it's it's getting out there now Petuari the, the A63 which people travel to in Hull is called Petuari Way there's a lot of subtle changes going on which gets the name out there. What I would say to people is get behind the project, get involved. Over the over the next few years we're going to be here. If you want to take part, you want to get down and get dirty with us, just follow it on Facebook and next year when we advertise again to the community, follow it up and come down and help us and be part of part of revisiting the past with us.